You're watching TVC Breakfast. Now, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has failed to win the approval of uh, enough lawmakers to go ahead with his plan to hold an early election. He needed the way to win the backing of at least 434 lawmakers, but only 298 voted in favour of an election, while 56 voted against. The opposition Labour Party instructed its lawmakers to abstain on the vote. Now, lawmakers had earlier backed a bill to block a no-deal Brexit, which triggered Mr. Johnson's decision to seek a general election. Joining me now from Brussels, Belgium, is a global affairs analyst, Collins Mweke. Collins, it's good to have you join me right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. I, I know you've been following this development uh, fr from London. Now, break it, out, uh, break it down for us to understand. Uh, the, there seem to be some level of desperation on the side of the Prime Minister to leave uh, uh, EU by all means. Talking about the issue of a uh, deal or no deal, uh, he's doing everything to ensure that uh, Britain is out of uh, the, the EU by October. Indeed. Um, you, you can actually underscore a very high level of um, desperation on the part of uh, Prime Minister uh, Boris Johnson. Um, now, what we are looking at is... Um, a new um, phase in the British uh, political landscape. Now, in Central Europe and other parts of uh, Europe, uh, as a matter of fact, what um, the, the British uh, politicians are experiencing now is an everyday occurrence there, whereby uh, parties are forced to actually, um, you know, stretch their hands across the table and you know negotiate in the best interest of uh, the country but you see the um, uh, parliamentary democracy of uh, britain is completely uh, different in the sense that um, uh, most of the time almost all the all of the time parties are usually um, you know able to win enough majority to uh, you know get through their programs and their projects now in this case we know that in the beginning of his um, uh, premiership he had only one, um, uh, one majority. Now, in the course of uh, all the turmoil, he has actually lost a further 20 members of parliament. So his um, uh, majority is short by 21. So that makes it really difficult for him to govern. So you can actually say that um, the prime minister of Britain as of today is the head of government, but he hasn't got the power to operate because he is operating in a uh, minority. All right. <coughs> His call for a, a snap election by uh, mid-October uh, seemed to be a, another uh, tactical or strategy to uh, ensure that uh, he, he scales through with uh, the no Brexit or Brexit no <laughs> deal or no Brexit deal. What do you make of that? What I make of that is that um, uh, it's looking more and more unlikely that he is going to have his way. Uh, first and foremost, he lost. He you know he tried to staple the parliament, set them uh, you know on uh, on recess uh, sorry on recess to ensure that uh, he escapes the scrutiny of um, you know the opposition uh, parties. Now, when that didn't work because the opposition parties uh, you know came together and uh, you know decided to draft this bill to stop him from crashing out of uh, the um, European Union, um, he thought that he could uh, manage to, you know, kind of uh, twist their arms and uh, call for a general election. We have seen from the results you um, presented at the beginning of uh, the bulletin that even that um, uh, snap election is impossible because they have a fixed term parliamentary system whereby the term of uh, a parliamentary life is fixed uh, and so if the Prime Minister needs to change that for any reason, he's going to have uh, to take majority to be able to do that. Mm. He hasn't got that, and so he is now stuck. As we speak, that um, bill is now on its way to the House of Lords, where it needs to be um, confirmed. Uh, but uh, all those hopes are not completely lost for him, because it might very well be that uh, the uh, house of the house of laws the bill would be um, filibustered so which means that they will use some delay tactics to keep it there at the house of laws until the um, uh, uh, end of october 
when they are meant to crash out of the uh, European Union. So all those are not completely law for you, but it's looking more and more unlikely that he will get his way through. All right. Uh, uh, Collins, <clears throat> I wonder what scenarios you see playing out with all of the, the issue of the suspension of the parliament and then uh, waiting for the House of Lords to uh, come up with a, a final resolution on this. And all. I wonder what scenarios you, 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 you foresee. Yeah, there are um, two broad uh, scenarios. Uh, scenario number one is the situation where he listens to the voices of the opposition and says, okay, uh, they, like me, want an election because it looks likely that uh, that is the way out of the impasse. And then he uh, assists to their request. And uh, their request is not for one. The bill that was passed yesterday by Parliament needs to be uh, converted into an act. So which means that it, it needs to become a full law which completely ties his hand, uh, hands and makes it impossible for him to get out of uh, the European uh, Union. And so they will accede to his request for um, a general election. All right. That is not likely to happen because he has said over his dead body. All right. That we we have to leave it here now, uh, Collings. Thank you very much for your insight into all of this uh, for us. Thank you. Collins Mweke is Global Affairs Analyst, joining us from Brussels in uh, Belgium. Belgium. You're watching TVC Breakfast. Now, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has failed to win the approval of enough lawmakers to go ahead with his plan to hold an early election. He needed to win the backing of at least 434 lawmakers, but only 298 voted in favour of an election, while 56 voted against. The opposition Labour Party instructed its lawmakers to abstain on the vote. Now, lawmakers had earlier backed a bill to block a no-deal Brexit, which triggered Mr Johnson's decision to seek a general election. Joining me and now from Brussels, Belgium, is a global affairs analyst, Collins Nwake. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it seems um, uh, Mr. Boris Johnson is saddled with a huge responsibility of bringing Britain out of the EU. How difficult is it for him now? Uh, well, I, I think, uh, thank you very much, uh, Sarah, for having me. Um, I think it's, um, it's not just becoming difficult. I think... Um, there are indications that this is uh, becoming an impossible uh, uh, task. Um, as we speak, the uh, bill that was uh, passed yesterday uh, in Parliament is on its way for ratification at uh, the House of Lords. We also know that uh, the EU has uh, actually uh, responded you know, to, uh, to the crisis, actually uh, calling it um, untenable and uh, you know, mentioning that uh, they do not see how um, you know they could move forward under the uh, current uh, situation. So what we expect to happen uh, is that um, uh, it may very well be that um, uh, members of the House of Lords that are sympathetic to um, uh, Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister, uh, might find one way or the other to delay the bill so that it doesn't become an act, helping him to then uh, crash out. On the other hand. All right, but I want to ask if if all this is playing out and it's going to be playing out in the House of, of Lords. But let's look at where will Britain be if uh, indeed they exit the EU with a no deal? What disruption would that cause to a country like Britain? Well, um, it depends on who is analysing the uh, situation. Now, those who are opposed to um, to Brexit. Uh, you know, we want to tell you that when they crash out, that it's going to uh, met out uh, untold hardship to the economy of, um, of Britain, causing it jobs and actually putting people's lives uh, in danger in terms of uh, medical supply, for example, in terms of uh, food shortages and uh, so on and so forth. Now, on the other hand, uh, those who favor, um, you know, a Brexit will tell you that um, there are measures in place to actually ensure that uh, those uh, economic hardships, uh, you know, loss of jobs and so on and so forth, uh, do not happen. And the government will uh, point to the fact that they have uh, freed out some uh, 100 billion uh, pounds to be able to, uh, you know, forestall the, the devastation. However, 
um, a neutral person looking at it will tell you indeed that uh, all figures from independent uh, bodies point to the fact that uh, a no deal Brexit or even uh, a Brexit with uh, some deal is definitely going to affect uh, the UK um, economy because these are independent uh, you know, mm. people uh, speaking. So yes, uh, Britain is up for a very hard time and these are all uh, avoidable because they didn't need to uh, have the referendum that led to uh, you know, this uh, whole Brexit uh, saga. But uh, that is the situation. But it's becoming, uh, it's looking more and more unlikely that they will crash out. Do you see any influence from the outside world, uh, for instance, from President Donald Trump? Well, Donald Trump's uh, rhetoric um, has actually not helped uh, issues. Um, and I think we know why. Donald Trump is a very transactional uh, president. By that, I mean that he doesn't stick his hands into anything that wouldn't benefit uh, him or the United States of America. Uh, he is not a globalist, you know, somebody that thinks in the general interest of uh, the global economy and uh, humanity as a whole. So he sees Britain being out of uh, the EU as an opportunity for uh, America to uh, solidify and actually strengthen their business and uh, their trade uh, relationship. So that is one of the key reasons that he is supporting this, as opposed to his predecessor, uh, Barack Obama, who have looked at the uh, holistic picture and felt that uh, Britain being inside the EU uh, will actually mean a win-win for all, both for the United States, both for the EU and uh, Britain. Okay. But uh, with Donald Trump, is completely different. And, uh, you know, we have seen how much, uh, you know, that is uh, actually uh, alienating people, for, uh, politicians especially, but the public, who are actually uh, opposed to uh, Donald Trump, Trump, I mean the UK public. Mm. But uh, now look at um, the travel, let's, if I would call it the travels of um, the former Prime Minister Theresa May and what Boris Johnson is into now. What would you say is the difference and what scenario do you see playing out in the coming days? Well, um, Boris Johnson has been painted for very good reasons as uh, an opportunist. Um, he has always wanted to be prime minister, uh, and for very good reasons, uh, people have always felt that for him it was a matter of when. So he was actually waiting for the right moment uh, to strike. And in doing so, uh, he had told all sorts of lies, simply tell people what they wanted to hear, whatever sounds good, to make him achieve his goal. He knew, going for the position of uh, prime minister, that there wasn't anything much different that he is going to do from what um, you know Theresa May has done. So that is uh, the really um, you know the, the cross of the matter. Mm. Global, okay. Global Affairs Analyst uh, Collins Nwiki, thank you so much for your time. Watching TVC Breakfast. Now, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has failed to win the approval of enough lawmakers to go ahead with their plans to hold an early election. He needed, the, he needed to win the backing of at least 434 lawmakers, but only 298 voted in favour of an election, while 56 voted against. Now, the opposition Labour Party instructed its lawmakers to abstain on the vote. Lawmakers had earlier backed a, a, a bill to block a no-deal Brexit, which triggered Mr Johnson's decision to seek a general election. Joining me now from Brussels in Belgium is a global affairs analyst, Collins Mweke. Uh, Collins, it's good to have you join me right this morning. Now, make us understand, break it down for especially uh, Africans and maybe Nigerians who are watching and following this. Uh, what does it mean, a, 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 no a no deal Brexit or a deal Brexit? What does it mean and, and what do Africans need to know about this or Commonwealth uh, nations? Well, I believe that um, the most important thing for uh, Africans and the Commonwealth nations uh, need to know is that um, Brexit has the potential to increase trading between um, Great Britain and uh, the Commonwealth nations. And it may also help to strengthen uh, their relationship because um, uh, you have to consider the fact that uh, Britain being part of the European Union, uh, the European Union is 
currently their greatest uh, trading partners. So what that means is that uh, Africa and the Commonwealth nations may be uh, a number two, number three, or number four. Now, out of the European Union, it means that uh, they will try to, uh, you know, invest uh, more in Africa and, uh, you know, trade more. Now, you can see that also with the fact that um, Theresa May actually uh, made a visit to Nigeria uh, sometime last year. It is part of the preparations for Brexit. So for Nigeria, yes, it is a good thing. But of course, uh, and, and other African countries. Um, now, that doesn't change very much. I mean, even when they remain in, um, in, uh, in, in the Europe, in the European Union, um, it means that Nigeria, uh, in, within the um, Africa Continental Free Trade uh, Agreement, can also negotiate, uh, you know, uh, trade deals with Europe as a bloc, which will benefit them as well. So, uh, give or take, uh, not very much uh, changes, but it looks like um, when they are out of the EU, uh, it will benefit Africa and the Commonwealth uh, slightly more. All right, what the, uh, Theresa May, the former Prime Minister of Britain, uh, had this also as his uh, as a hard agenda to act, to actually get out of uh, to take Britain out of uh, the European Union. What would you see as? Uh, in fact, Boris Johnson was also on her t on her team until at, at the time when uh, she had to uh, he had to drop out. Now, looking at uh, comparing their, their tactics, what do you think has changed from what Boris Johnson is doing to achieve this aim and what Theresa May was doing? Very good question. Um, you can see this from the difference between the two uh, politicians. First and foremost, uh, Theresa May uh, voted Remain. So, which means that um, had she had her way, um, Britain wouldn't have been living. Now, the difference between her and uh, Boris Johnson, Johnson is that Johnson actually voted um, Brexit. He voted you know, for Britain to leave the EU. And actually, as a matter of fact, this is very, very important, led the campaign for uh, Britain to exit out of the, out of the EU. What the, why it is important, why this nuance is important is because you could see that from Theresa May's uh, approach, once the referendum had been passed and majority of people in Britain wanted a uh, Brexit, she, you know, took that up as her responsibility, being the head of uh, government, to deliver what the British people had said. But she wanted to do that in an orderly manner, in a manner that comes out with Britain retaining its friends within the European uh, Union and continuing to trade with Europe because she understands that quite apart from the relationship, you know, on a diplomatic uh, level, that it is also good for Britain. Now, for um, um, Johnson, it is different because for him, at all costs, Britain has to leave. So that is um, actually the difference. Uh, has much changed? No, not really. And I believe that um, the uh, grounds on which uh, the British people were convinced to vote to uh, go out of the EU, uh, some of them have been uncovered to be huge lies. So Boris Johnson is actually being caught up in the lies that he told in the run up to where uh, to the vote and now he's trying he's having to deal with uh, the repercussions all right uh, colin's global affairs analyst joining us from brussels thank you very much for talking to us